Thank you, Gilly. Good morning, everybody. There are a number of announcements. Uh, they're a bit disjointed, but let me, uh, let me go through them best I can. Uh, there is a coffee hour, and thanks to Michelle DeHart for making those arrangements, and her daughter-in-law is responsible for the cookies at the coffee hour, so thank you for that. Uh, the prayer list is accurate, best we know it. Uh, we wanted to add the name Katie Culkin this morning, so all of those folks we'll want to remember in our prayer time. Uh, also uh, today, uh, happy birthday, Marie. Um, we're not going to ask you to stand up or we're not going to, you know, not, nothing other than say happy birthday to you. And um, um, speaking of birthdays, John Davies, one of his sons, Owen, is celebrating his 40th birthday today, and he is in Afghanistan, uh, John says possibly in Kabul today, and he's 40 years old today, and he works for the World Food Program, and maybe some of John's gray hairs are because of the places where Owen has worked in these recent years. John thought we could all sing happy birthday to Owen, and then Owen will ultimately see it on YouTube. So John, let's do that. Thank you, John. Um, yes, uh, Sunday is, is a work day for Owen. I think his, uh, the, the, his weekend starts on Friday, it being a Muslim uh, country. And, uh, extends over to Saturday, so he's working and wouldn't, otherwise I'd ask him to watch live. Uh, so I really appreciate it. if you would um, sing, sing happy birthday with him, and, and he'll all the way over in, in Afghanistan, he'll hear it. I'm, I'm going to uh, give, let's see, what, what's your, is that a good? You got His name is Owen. <laughs> Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Owen. Happy birthday to you. And many more. Thank you so much. So we come to the time when we light our final Advent candle, and we've chosen the person who has come the greatest number of miles today to worship with us, none other than Karen Ortel, who is online most Sundays with us um, right here in the front, uh, before church, during church, and after church. So Karen, if you'd come to the front, and we'll let you um, light the candle immediately following the reading we have in our bulletins. So will you join with me? We now light the fourth of our Advent candles. Their combined light symbolizes, once again, the birth of Jesus. Joy to the world, the Lord comes again. The Savior rules with truth and grace, and we are reminded that the light of his life overcomes the darkness of the world. And now let's join in our call to worship. Through silence, word, and wonder, we celebrate our annual journey to Bethlehem. May we continue to worship the Holy One who beckons us through an infant's cry. As such, God provides new life and new hope for each of us. Our opening hymn is number 234, Stanzas one, three, and six.
May we all pray together. Almighty and gift-giving God, we thank you for sending the baby Jesus into our lives, for his innocence and purity, but also for his wisdom, example, and sacrifice as an itinerant preacher. We praise you for coming amongst us, knowing that light and hope will be our constant companions. Amen. So John at Chitnango, this is the first time that you and Gilly have been together. Right. Yeah.
John, sometimes your questions in your narrative are appropriate for a seminary classroom. And there are times when you look in my direction when I know the answer. And there are other times when I just want to slink down on that bench and break the sight line between you and me because I don't know. Well, most often on Sunday mornings, I read something that is from kind of a modern translation. But there are some things in both Old and New Testaments that never should be read from the modern translation because it loses something of its traditional value. So I'm going to read from one of the older translations this morning, the very beginning of the Gospel of John. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came for testimony, to bear witness to the light, that all might believe through him. He was not the light, but came to bear witness to the light. The true light that enlightens every person was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made through him, yet the world knew him not. He came to his own home, and his own people received him not. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, full of grace and truth. Let's prepare to pray together. We thank you, O oh God, for what is to come. We will feast on Christmas Day. Abundance will reign at the dinner table. In some homes, the chairs will be filled. In others, not so. But the colored lights of the tree will shine, gaily wrapped gifts at its base, Children will be excited. Soft Christmas music may play in the background. And regardless of circumstance, we will be joyous because you have come again in the Christ child. You give us your love and ask us to return it by loving one another. You challenge us to push back the darkness with the light that you offer us. We pray this holy season not only for peace on earth and goodwill toward others, but also for an inner peace that brings us both joy and comfort. Abide with us, we sing in that Christmas song. Love us, heal us, protect us, that in all seasons we might be your faithful witnesses. So hear this, our prayer we ask. And now hear us as we pray together silently.
As the newborn Jesus grew to become an itinerant preacher, he taught his followers then to pray as he teaches us now to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. We will now receive our morning offering. Oh. 
The vision of Sir Launfal is a story that is English in origin. It's one of many stories that focuses on the Holy Grail. You remember that legendary cup that Jesus used on the night of his betrayal? The ending of the story takes place at Christmas. I've had this story in my library for years, and to the best of my recollection, have never, ever used it on a Sunday morning. So here is the story of the vision of Sir Launfal. Sir Launfal methodically reviewed his list for the third time. If he were to leave tomorrow on his great adventure, Everything would have to be prepared to be ready. So he tested his sword. Oh, so sharp to the touch. It glistened when he held it up to the moonlight. And Sir Launfal would use this sword with great courage against anyone who stood in his way. And next, he checked his shield. The metal was polished, the leather strap new and strong. He glanced toward the barn where his horse anticipated the journey. Sir Launfal had fed and brushed him just moments ago. And finally, he knelt beside his bed to pray before he slept. And these were his words. O oh Lord, tomorrow I begin my great journey in your name. I ask for your blessing and guidance as I search for the Holy Grail, the cup you used the last night you ate with your disciples. Make me pure. For only if I am pure will I be worthy to be the one who will find your holy cup. And when Sir Launfal fell asleep, he soon began to dream. His dream was so real that he actually thought it was morning. And he was saying goodbye to everybody in the castle. Proudly, he rode through the gates on his beautiful horse. However, just on the other side of the gates, a beggar stopped him. How annoying. At this holy moment, at the start of his quest for the Holy Grail, he certainly couldn't be bothered with someone so unimportant as a beggar. Sir Launfal flung a penny in the beggar's direction and rode on. Well, time can pass very quickly in a dream. Sir Launfal's dream covered many, many years. He searched everywhere for that holy grail. He fought many battles, but never did the Lord even provide him a glimpse of the cup that the Lord had used that last supper before his suffering and death. Discouraged, Sir Launfal, in his dream, had become an old man and he finally decided to return home. He rode along the snow-covered road sadly, and as he came within sight of the castle, he saw all the lights ablaze. He realized it was Christmas Eve, and there would be much feasting and much joy within those castle walls. So he rode up to the guard at the gate, and to his dismay, the guard 
didn't even recognize him. No beggars allowed within the castle gates, he insisted, and chased Sir Launfal away. Dejected, he got off his horse and sat down in the shelter of the castle wall. He looked at all the light streaming out of the windows. It was Christmas Eve, the night the Christ child was born, and here was Sir Launfal excluded from his own home. Had even the Lord rejected him? The noble knight pulled his last crust of bread from his pocket. And just as he began to eat it, he noticed a beggar nearby. It was the same beggar he had seen at those gates many years ago when he had departed on his mission. Sir Launfal broke his bread and offered half to the beggar. And then he went to the nearby brook, broke the ice, and drew water for both of them to drink. As they ate together and drank from the now elderly knight's wooden bowl, a strange thing happened. Sir Launfal suddenly thought the crust tasted like fresh bread and the water like the finest of all wine. He turned to the beggar, but the beggar was gone. And in the beggar's place, he saw the shining presence of the Christ himself. And then he heard the Lord say, not what we give, but what we share. For the gift without the giver is bare. Who gives himself with his alms feeds three. Himself, his hungering neighbor, and me. Sir Launfal looked down at his wooden bowl and it wasn't there. Instead, he held in his hands, so the story goes, the Holy Grail. His search was over. And with that, the knight awakened from his sleep. It was morning. Sir Launfal believed that the Christ had spoken to him, and now he knew what he must do. So he instructed his servants Put away my sword and my armor. I'm not going to distant countries to search for the Holy Grail. It is right here in my own castle. And from that day onward, Sir Launfal opened wide the gates of his castle to the poor and the hungry. He welcomed both rich and poor and was friendly to everyone. In his castle, everybody experienced the love and the kindness of the one who had dined with the Christ. And that is the story of the vision of Sir Launfal. Our closing hymn is number 246, Joy to the World.
immediately when you hear it. Uh, and uh, when I when I give you the sign, if you want to join in, Laura, <laughs> and everybody else, uh, please do. Great service. Yeah, it was very nice. How are you doing, Bev? I'm doing fine, Neil, and I hear you're doing good too, huh? Yeah, I'm doing better. I'm trying to behave. Sorry to hear about it. You had, what did you hear yeah, wrong? Just, you, I forgot you know. 